There are a ton of things for you guys to be doing in Genshin Impact, but this video is tailored towards the end game, getting the best gear, what you're going to be looking for as far as weapons and equipment is concerned. This is not going to be a video for a new player. If you're a newer player, go ahead and check out some of the other videos on the channel tailored to you. But if you're an end game esque player, you're on the road to the finale, trying to look how to get strong for the Abyss 9, 10, 11, 12, then this is what we're going to be talking about. Today, we're going to be talking about what it is that you should be looking for when it comes to weapons, putting a full build together for your character, as well as what it is that you're looking for and what an actual good piece of gear, a good artifact looks like. So you can differentiate between what is worth leveling and what is not worth leveling up and worth all of those precious artifacts that you're probably running into a drought of at this point in time. So artifacts come in tons of shapes and sizes in Genshin Impact what artifact set you should be using on each character is going to differentiate between them based on your play style if it's a fast hard-hitting normal attacker you're going to want something like the martial artist set or the gladiators set if you have a support pyro elemental character you're looking for the crimson wish of flame set thundering fury set for someone like fischl once you have the ability to farm those sets and you should not be doing that until you're ar 35 ar 40 at the minimum so you can get the good high tier five star sets especially from generic domains at ar40 then we're going to be looking at what sort of stats and what an actual good piece of gear is and what is worth your time and precious resources leveling up so once you have a piece of gear drop for you you're going to be asking yourself should i invest in this is this going to be good for me so let's take a look at some pieces of gear that are good and some pieces of gear that are going to be bad and not worth your time. So first case, you're looking at the main stat for your pieces of gear. The circlet, the goblet, and the sands have the most variety when it comes to main stats. The other ones, the feather as well as the flower, these always come with the same main stat rolls. So there's always HP and flowers always flat attack on the feather you guys know this by now so the first thing that you're going to prioritize is the set that you want and then you're going to start prioritizing your main step but after that what is going on here and what about the substats and that's when it comes down to the nitty gritty really strong substats are what you're looking for here but how does it work so let's talk about that the higher the base rarity of your item is the more substats and higher substat rolls you can achieve. This is because a lower level artifact has less native base substats on it. All artifacts can hit a high substat amount, but not all artifacts will have the same amount of substats. Every four levels that you level an artifact up, they will gain an additional substat slot up to four. If you are already at four, instead of gaining an additional substat slot, you will actually increase a pre-existing substat. This is why five-star artifacts are so powerful. They don't have to waste any rolls, giving you an extra substat. They already come with all of the rolls for you to see. This allows you to determine for yourself right then and there. Take this Gladiator's Triumphus, for example. It's a defensive main stat. Then it has crit damage percent, attack percent, HP percent and then flat HP. So this one was okay. This one is on Noel L actually right now. I'm actually using her and she's pretty strong, right? She's got some things that skill off defense. She's got some things that skill off her attack. If you want to make her a bruiser type character, extra crit hit damage. This is going to do very well for her. Every single time you level this up, remember every four levels because we're already maxed out on the five stars for this base item you're going to get one of the four stats increased at random. And this one, the RNG comes into play for you guys. And this is how you're going to know whether or not you need to continue or you need to stop. It's easier with the five stars than it is the four stars. But we're going to explain the five stars first. If something drops and it has two or three good substats, it's going to be an excellent piece for you to try to target something on like this one. I was happy with the attack percent. I was happy with the crit hit damage increase. So I leveled it up. Every four levels, one of these things would increase at random. I got attack percent. I was happy with that. I continue with this one, get additional attack percent increase. I was happy with that. Continue on, continue on, continue on. Now it's max level. Most of the rolls went to attack percent as well as crit hit damage percent. So for this character, and it's going to be different for each of your characters, you have to determine 
how you want to use that character, what that character scales off of, and what you're happy with on that artifact. For me, I love the defense percent for Noelle in one of her slots, then I wanted attack percent so she still hits hard, and then create damage helps me there. A perfect artifact in this instance for me, if that flat HP was crit hit chance, like 5% crit hit chance, 4% crit hit chance, that makes this artifact even better. That means there's not really a role that I'm super unhappy with. I have crit hit damage, crit hit chance in that case, attack percent, and then HP percent. That's fantastic. I would absolutely love an artifact like that. Now let's talk about four star artifacts. So four star artifacts have two to up to three. As you can see, they can actually drop with two to three predetermined substat rolls. So this is gonna be a small little difference between a lot of the four star artifacts out there. Some four star artifacts are actually better than other four star artifacts. This is gonna follow the same train of thought that we've talked about for the rest of this video and previously every four levels, you will either get a new substat added to the pre-existing ones, or if you already have four different substats, you're going to increase the ones that you have. This is what makes these four-star artifacts that drop with three different substats better than the ones that drop with two. Because for instance, this TR of Flame, if I want to maximize the amount of substats I have, which you want to, because you're approaching end game, that means two of those times where I'm going to add to the power of my substats, I'm going to add new ones to the TR first. So this is actually gonna get one less actual upgrade than the conductor's top hat, because this only needs to add one new substat, whereas the TR needs to add two, which could mean that this Elemental Mastery 17, I could actually get an extra increase to the Elemental Mastery or the extra crit hit rate on the conductor's top hat because of that small difference. So you can get very, very well statted four stars and you could use them at end game. Not everything needs to be a five star. It's going to be extremely hard, extremely difficult guys to get a perfect piece of gear. But this is why we want to go ahead and describe how this system works for you guys so you can make your own decisions. That's what we're here for. We're here to learn and figure out what's best. If we wanted to go over every best substat for every character in the game on every best piece of artifact for them, we'd be here forever, right? Because you'd be like, what's my best artifact for this character? Like, well, attack percent main stat, then you want crit hit chance, then you want crit hit damage, and then if you're playing the character this way, you want some elemental mastery. If you're not, maybe you want some defense instead, maybe, you know, things like that. Cannot go over all of that stuff, but a simple rule of thumb, if you're approaching the end game and you're looking for those perfect pieces of gear, the substats are going to be very, very important for you. You're not going to want to invest in things that have, you know, attack flat, defense flat, elemental mastery on a character that you're not using. You could get that really awesome piece of gladiators gear, and then it just has a bunch of stats you don't necessarily care about on your character, right? You don't want a physical damage dealer that has, you know, flat HP or percent HP, in combination with flat attack, flat defense, and elemental mastery. It's not gonna do anything for you. Can you use that as a sub-in for now? Yes, is that gonna be your end all be all piece of gear? No, it's not. You're gonna to wanna to invest in something for you that works very, very well with you. There are gonna be times and instances, guys, where you're just gonna to have to roll the dice. You know, you're not gonna get that perfect piece of gear. You're gonna to have to roll the dice and see what you get there and see if you're happy with it. For instance, this Royal Flora, I'm currently using on Venti. And it did very well for me. It rolled energy recharge, got lucky there. It rolled elemental mastery a time or two, got lucky there. Then I hit like a defense one time and got unlucky there. But all in all, I'm very happy with this piece. Could I have gotten unluckier? Could I hit flat defense the entire way up? Yes, I could. So let's talk about when you should know when to quit leveling up a piece of gear. Cause you're gonna have to make these decisions, level it up a couple of times. If it hits the couple of the stats, maybe you're you know, one out of three, two out of four that you like, three out of four that you like, if it's hitting the stats that you're happy with, keep going and leveling that piece of gear. Keep loving that artifact. But if it hits one thing you, that you don't like, maybe it's hitting that defense flat a couple of times. It's hit it two times, hit it three times. If you're not happy with it, which you shouldn't be at that rate, it's time to stop investing your precious artifacts because the only way to level them up right now it's time to stop investing 
and just let it sit. Let it sit there for a while. Maybe it's a set piece that you're using, but stop investing in it. What you need to do at that point in time though, guys, and here's the good news, is that when you imbue an artifact with a previously already leveled up artifact, you get a substantial amount of that EXP. So you're not entirely penalized for trying to get good items out of items that don't look that great. You don't get the full amount back, but you do get somewhere around 80, 90% of that EXP that you spent back into your artifact. So for right now, say this Gladiator's Nostalgia that I have on Noel, if I wanted to level this up a couple of times, maybe see if I can't hit that crit hit rate a couple of times, take it to plus six, plus nine, cause I'm a little greedy and I get good and I get that crit hit rate. I can keep using this, be happy with it, but not fully invested. I'm not gonna take it to plus 20. I'm not gonna take it to plus 12. Maybe I'll take it to, like I said, nine or 10 or somewhere around there to get that extra HP. But when I finally get the better Gladiator's Nostalgia to drop, if it drops and it looks really good, it's got defense percent, it's got attack percent, crit hit chance, all of the good stuff ready to go. I can take the Gladiator's Nostalgia that I worked on a little bit, use as a stop gap to get me through different tiers of content like the Abyss Floor, and I can get that 80 to 90% of my EXP back into my new Gladiator's Nostalgia. And that's the good part about following that system, taking a little bit of risk. You're actually not really penalized that much, but I want to get this video out there for you guys. So you guys know what you should be looking for when it comes to approaching the end game, what's worth your time and resources and Genshin Impact when it comes to the artifact system. With that being said, guys, thanks for spending that time here today. Again, if you want to see more stuff, on the channel, different guides, character reviews, build guides, all of that great stuff. You know where it is. Check it out, the playlist, and also come back for more. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.